Good morning. Now, there's a reason. It's Dave Crane, sorry, by the way. Uh, I'm not apologizing for being Dave Crane. I'm just saying it's Dave Crane. And sorry for the fact that I just woke up. Um, why am I in the dark? Why can you see nothing? Because today is all about personal branding. It's all about going from the darkness of whoever you are into the light for dramatic effect, just like this. So people can work out who you are, they can find you, and they can do business with you. I'm not going to go on a roof today. I'm going to instead go outside and we'll probably see our gardener. Ash, you come in. And my dog is coming as well. Oh, just to keep us company. There we go. Oh, sorry about that. When I end up moving the camera around a little bit, it goes a bit weird. Uh, da, 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 da. Here we are. I thought we'd just go somewhere different from on the roof. Um, I'm going to go up and do the gym stuff later on. So here we are. There's me and there's Ash, who's now running about somewhere and just doesn't want to be on the camera, which is fine. How are you this morning? Are you good? Fantastic. Uh, I went along yesterday to uh, the annual general meeting of uh, ILIA, which is um, the International um, Live Events Association. It's a trade association for people who work in events and exhibitions. Really fascinating, amazing group of people. And the, the Middle East chapter is growing unbelievably. So if you're interested, because you're in the events industry, if you're in exhibitions, conferences, as a supplier or as a practitioner, or anything related to that, a hotel a, a owner, representative, a worker, and you want to get closer to the people you could be doing business with, definitely, definitely join the ILEA, I-L-E-A. Google it. A really amazing group of people. And also, if you have a certain grievance about the industry and you want to be able to address it properly, these are the people who are there for you. They're a trade association, and uh, I feel very privileged to be part of that group. Okay, so we are chatting yesterday, and a number of things came up, one of which was the fact that uh, people were talking about they don't know how to do public speaking, uh, and they also don't know about public branding. Now, this is personal branding is a massive issue. For me, it's something that I really enjoy talking about, because uh, if you've seen my website, turbochargeyourbrand.tv, in fact, the link will be on this video at the end of it, so make sure you have a look at it. It's all about tips and techniques. All the stuff I've been doing as a broadcast from here on a regular basis, it's all about that kind of stuff, about creating your personal brand. It's kind of windy today, isn't it? Nice day though. Yeah, have a quick look so you can get an idea about where we are. There we are, there's my garden. Okay, there we are. So you know that I'm not just um, in behind some green screen. Not that I would be doing that anyway. So, why should you create a personal brand? Why should you have an interest in letting people know what's going on? Now, I understand completely why people might be scared about putting their image and their details and their family life and what they get up to online. I'm not saying you should do that. In fact, that's probably what you should not be doing. Um, but you are a personal brand whether you believe it or not. People are talking about you. People are making decisions about you and deciding whether to use you or not use you for upcoming business uh, ventures uh, and possibilities and as a supplier or somebody they want to get consultancy and, and information from. But doing that anyway, whether you decide that you want to be online or not. Now, there's a number of different profiles you can use, of course. You already know about the, the platforms online. You could be talking to, with, uh, you could be on Twitter, you could be on Facebook, you should be on LinkedIn as well, you should be on Instagram because of the fact that a lot of people love Instagram. I personally have got with Instagram accounts, but don't do much with it. If it gets windy and it falls over, that's because it's windy and the camera's gonna fall over. Um, you should be on a number, you should be on YouTube, but the thing is, all these different things I say you should be on and for many people they're going oh I don't know what to do well very quickly just go to the website for all these different platforms you hear and register your name create a very simple profile like on Google Google Plus create a simple profile and leave it park it put some information down because the thing is this is how you want to be seen okay so even though you don't know what to put on it yet don't worry about that because you want to block it so at least you have the most important person on the planet with your name now you can find me as either Hypno Coach, The Life Designer, or Dave Crane. Or Dave M. Crane sometimes if I miss the boat, because Dave Crane is also the name of a very famous DJ uh, in Leeds, in the UK, and also the name of a guy who was one of the writers for Friends, and the guy who uh, created a number of computer games in the 80s and 90s. There's a couple of Dave Cranes I'm competing with all the time, but I'd like to think that they're competing with me. <laughs> they probably won't think that. So you've got a number of people that have your name. It's not exclusive on the planet, but wouldn't you prefer that people found you if they're looking for you rather than somebody else? Now, in many cases, it might be too late. In many cases, for 20, 50, 100 people called John Smith or whatever your name is have already got the template or the website um, booked in their name, in which case you have to think of another way of doing it. Maybe you put the in front of your name or you put number one 
a one at the end or something, but, but you should book it. The reason you book it is very simple. Morning, Khalid. It's Khalid, our gardener. Just come to do some work. Cheers, bud. Um, the reason you do it is because, as I mentioned, if you haven't done it, somebody else will take that for you. So what kind of content should you be putting on? Well, first of all, all the stuff you want people to find. Now, here's something that's kind of scary, is if you don't give people enough information about you, they will make assumptions about you. First of all, they'll wonder what are you hiding if you haven't got a profile. If you're not on Facebook and you're not on LinkedIn, what is it that you're trying to hide from? You might just be saying, I don't want to do it, I don't want to conform to everybody else, but people don't think like that. What they do think is this person is dodgy. When I get a business card from somebody and I, I go home, I'll look them up on Facebook, I'll look them up on LinkedIn, I'll cross-reference their personal life and their business life, and then decide if I want to add them as my friend on both. And also decide from there if I want to do business with them. If I can't find those details, then generally I have a big question mark over who that person is. And it might be that they just don't feel comfortable online. But we're in a different world now. In a world now where once upon a time we used to be super paranoid about, about what our information would be and how people can find out about what's going on. Well, people can find out regardless about what's going on. And they are making a decision about who you are and what you do. So if they're going to make a decision about it, you might as well put something out that you want them to find. Otherwise, they're going to make decisions that are not the ones that you truly want them to find. Now also, it's a mindset generational thing as well. Right now, I'm of a generation, <laughs> old people, who think about my information. I don't want people to know my information, my business, and what's going on. There's a paranoia, just a Bible paranoia, about the government and, and, and authorities and rich people who might be checking out stuff that's going on and manipulating the way the world is. Now, it sounds paranoid, but just Google and you'll find enough reasons to find out that might have some uh, truth to it. But the next generation, or the current generation, don't think about I, they think about we. They think about global village mentality. As far as they're concerned, whoever you are, you are part of a bigger chain of people, almost like a hive of people all around the world who are friends. And as a, as a result of being friends, they share information with each other. And they have no problem with other people finding out who they are and what they've been up to. They'll post whatever it takes to get that relationship going. Now, is it gonna come back and haunt them when it comes to getting a job? Maybe, especially if they're looking for a job that doesn't involve being drunk and disorderly and waking up in a skip with a police cone on your head uh, and somebody you've never met before. That, that, that's not one of my personal stories. but. Right now, they're not thinking in terms like that, and you should be thinking as a combination of both. Global Village, people share information, but only put out what you want people to find about you. Don't put out anything that's too personal. So anybody who's had a big argument and puts it online, no, 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 no. Anybody who's upset with a government agency or some kind of big company, no, no, no. Especially the UAE, but I mean, it's true for anywhere, footballers, pop stars, celebrities, who think that their ability to talk about things from a personal point of view allows them to get away with stuff, the way that if you're a broadcasting agency like the BBC or CNN you, or Fox, you can get away with? No, 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 no. It's the same thing. The minute you start posting, you become a personal broadcasting house. You are media, and you're using media, so you can be very, very careful what you post. You can get into serious trouble by saying the wrong thing about somebody, and they can see you. Here in the UAE, they're very, very, very sensitive about it. You can't even take photos of people and publish them without their permission. Now, there's very good reasons for doing that. You might say, that guy cut me up, he's a d dangerous driver. You should never be doing that. Let's take a photo of his um, 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 license plate and name and shame. But the other side is, what if somebody's stalking you? What if somebody's taking too much information of you and putting it online without your permission? So you can be prosecuted, and I think with very good reason. So, here we talk about public branding, personal branding, and getting the stuff out that you want people to know all about you. Be brave, and put out the, only the stuff that's good about you, only the stuff that's honest, only the stuff that you want people to find. I mean, the experience of, of, of whistleblowers like Edward Snowden and Julian Assange, whatever you think of them personally, where they expose to the world all the things that, that shady people have been doing. That ends up with a massive scrutiny of them and usually some kind of prosecution. Now, here's a wake-up call. The authorities have all your details anyway. They know where you are, they can track you, and they can zoom in on you now, whether it's through a satellite or through your phone or whatever. They can locate you. They can build up from your Facebook profile. In fact, they've shown it from psychology. They can build up 99% accuracy what you post on Facebook as a way of who you are, what you eat, what you like, and what, who you'd vote for. 
So that information is out there. Should you be paranoid? I think you should be a little bit paranoid, but also at the same time, you should also carry on with your life, because otherwise, if you worry too much about it, you'll stay in the box, you'll never get out. So what's the next stage of public of, of uh, personal branding? Well, if you go to turbochargerbrand.tv, I have tons of interviews with people who are all experts on personal branding. Guys like Jack Canfield, who talks about how you should create your own business and how you should formulate it on the stuff that you're, have, you have natural strengths for. People like Brian Tracy, who gives you expert tips on sales and, and driving your brand and driving your business so other people will be interested in it too. And guys like Dr. John Gray, the experts from um, um, men are from Mars, women are from Venus. Venus? Venus? <laughs> they're not from Venus, they're not sure where they're from, but it's definitely not Venus. Uh, and he talks about how your relationship with your other half or your partner, uh, or men and women, uh, or men and men, women and women, uh, is able to shape how people perceive you and also how you can get more out of those relationships too. A key element to all this, and this is something I get massive interest in, is public speaking. I reckon somewhere in the region of, of 30 to 50% on average of your earnings are enhanced if you're able to speak properly. It doesn't mean going blah blah blah, blah. speaking in public, being able to communicate effectively. I'll be doing more on that in coming sessions. Um, my very good friend Ernesto Verdugo and I are planning something, I'm Mitch Carson, planning something special for those of you based in Dubai or based in the US. You can come along, we're going to be running a course. Um, speak and Grow Richer, which will help to train you to be a public speaker. Now you might not want to be a public speaker, you might not have an interest in going out and motivating people, that's fine, most people don't, but 9 out of 10 people have a massive fear of public speaking and it's something that's created, they don't get born with that. If you've got kids, or you, you, you once were a kid, <laughs> which is most people, then you'll know that they have no fear of telling you exactly what they want, they'll just say it. But somewhere along the line, somebody tells them otherwise and makes them really scared about talking in public and as a direct result of that, they don't like to communicate. Well, that's a massive, massive problem and it's a massive opportunity missed because if you can speak better, you can find out exactly how to get the stuff that you want, you can get the people you want on board, you can inspire and motivate them and of course, if you're visible because you say things that other people wouldn't be comfortable saying in public, you become more prominent and you get better promotions. Literally between three, 30 and 50%, very conservatively, more earnings in your lifetime because you can speak properly. And that's a massive part of your personal brand. Now what I'm not saying is you have to do videos like this on a regular basis. This is something I particularly want to do because I want to share who I am and what I do. And also give great tips for people, um, hopefully, that, that work to enhance their lives. So I talk about things that are current, I talk about things that are relevant, I talk about things related to my own business as a motivational speaker. So if you're a cook, chef, plumber, um, doesn't matter what, what it is you do, whatever your job is, you might think that nobody's interested in it, you just go to work, but I guarantee that all the other people who either want to hire your services or want to be in a career like you, or also uh, supply somebody like you, would love to find out more about how it is that you do your stuff and the decision making that you take. And with that, you're instantly creating your own personal brand. So think about that. People are creating a personal brand about you, whether or not you're deciding to make it happen or not. So you might as well take control and make it happen. And yes, people are going to not like you. The minute you step above the, the, the parapet, people will decide they like you and don't like you. But hey, they're doing it anyway. If they write a comment you don't like, just delete it. Okay, that's it. End of lesson for today. Do your personal brand or die. I'm not joking about it. We're in a world now where people will decide they like you and want to do business with you based on what you actually dare to do. So you might as well put it out there. And you know what? You might have some fun. You might even meet the person of your dreams. Or a psycho. It's up to you. But anyway, have a lot of fun. I'll see you tomorrow. I think tomorrow we're going to be talking about stress management. So if you get stressed on a regular basis, especially when I'm doing a broadcast like this, or there's too much noise in the background, you probably can't hear me. It's all the roadworks. Do I have a quick look at roadworks? This is what I have to contend with. I'm going up on the roof in a moment to do my um, gym stuff. This is outside my house. Yes, they're building an air raid shelter. <laughs> Not really. Okay, that's it for me and Ash. Look after yourself and I'll catch up with you tomorrow. And uh, if there's anything on this article that was useful to you, then please feel free to share it. And I'd love to catch up with you later. And your comments as well. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you want to talk about tomorrow. Probably going to be about stress management, but it could be anything. Ash, what's about it, babe?
does not like being on telly, does not like having a personal brand. See, I told you, it starts with your dog. Or maybe she just wants to get fed. Have a nice day. See you later. Bye.